maybe that's the ultimate goal to to have a decentralized exchange. But now you know there's technical issues and there's trust issues, and even like right now you know people people say that exchanges they have responsibilities of helping with. Um, uh, anti money laundry and um, you know KYC. It's hard to go decentralized right now. Cheers, guys, for watching Crypto Nights. And once again, don't forget to check out our awesome community app, where as you can see, as of now. I have forecasted correctly, but the issue is there are 23 hours left. Check it out. Dear crypto community and blockchain buddies across the globe, welcome back to Kryptonites and our special edition Davos. Here we're on the road and we're really excited because we're meeting tons of really cool people and there are a lot of cool things happening in this small town. And today we have a very special guest, Ciara Sun, Chief of Staff at Hobi. Ciara. It's lovely to see you. Hi. Great talk yesterday. Thank you. It was really good. But before jumping into the talk, I would love to ask about yourself. Yeah. I know that you started off with Boston Consulting Group, yes. which is a very luxurious or nice company to work for, very difficult to get in. And you took that leap of faith to join the crypto world. Could you tell us a little bit about that story? Yeah, well, um, I, I was working in New York, you know, consensus there, a lot of crypto communities there. And um, I always knew that I wanted to do something more exciting. And, uh, you know, from my age, I, I missed the whole era of the Internet. Like, I, it's too late for me to do a startup, you know, in that industry. So when I see blockchain, it's really, you know, just um, excited me. And I thought, this is good. I should do it. So I decided to quit and uh, it kind of freaked out my my family a bit because, you know, this industry is so young and especially my grandma, like she never heard of that word. <laughs> She's like, what is washing? This is like illegal. <laughs> what are you doing? And she was like crying, everything. And uh, now I saw it good, you know, because the, um, our, our president um, endorsed the blockchain industry in um, October 24th and made blockchain our national strategy so we're like good now and i called my grandma and she's so happy she's like oh now i understand you're doing something nice and good and has a good future <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome i'm yeah. so happy your grandma's relieved now you yeah. know she's not worried about this world but you're talking about the internet and a lot of people talk about the internet of information the mm -hmm. internet of value or the internet of money yeah. is that kind of how you saw it you're like damn i missed the boat in terms of the internet or dot com era yeah. but this is the new wave is that what you felt yes exactly yes this is like a totally different technology like uh like what i what i said yesterday you know um, a couple of interesting facts about Imagine that you create a simple photo sharing app and it will be worth one billion dollars. So it's impossible, right? But Instagram did it. And you imagine that you create a simple chat app and it will be worth 19 billion dollars. Impossible, right? But like WhatsApp did it. And Bitcoin's even better. It created a permissionless um, and um, it's a decentralized platform system and now it's worth. 133 billion dollars. Yeah, it's definitely the area that we should, you know, all, all, all work into. That's really fascinating. And so you were based in New York, um, and obviously there's one topic, one big topic. You know, a lot of people are discussing China, and mm -hmm. we feel like there's a lot of people that are getting inaccurate information or have a misconception of what's truly happening in China. Went there myself and I realized different cities had different purposes, different activities. Could you please kind of educate us so that we can have a better understanding of how things are going so far? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, after 2017, when Chinese came up with regulations that it's not okay to do a change in, in China. So, um, Hobi, formed this new entity called Hobi China, and we do blockchain research and blockchain technology consulting and also blockchain education in China. We've been, we've been working on this for over a year now, so we're one of the earliest into the space. Um, and it's quite interesting to, to see how different cities react 
Um, so for example, in Beijing, there are some top universities, and we partner with, um, with Tsinghua, with Peking University on blockchain education. So it's very academic. Academical, yeah, and uh, in in Shanghai is more like it's the international hub. So we've we've been communicating with the talents and um, top brains in the industry all over the world. And then there's Hainan, this beautiful island. It's the sand, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's the sandbox, and um, it's it's very open to blockchain. Um, technology and blockchain industry. Um, actually, we host we hosted um, a first ever government backed conference in in Hainan in December, and uh, it's a great conference. We've uh, invited um, ministers from 16 different countries and discussing about blockchain and digital assets. It's it's a it's a very great opportunity for us to share thoughts on on a more like national level. And uh, there's Shenzhen too, you know, it's known as the Silicon Valley of China. Yeah. yeah. So we've been working with uh, Tencent and uh, Huawei and uh, Baidu, um, not only for blockchain education, but for some real use user case scenarios for blockchain technology solutions. That's so cool. So are those four cities or the kind of the most um, dedicated to blockchain these days? I'd say yes. Oh, very interesting. So these, you mentioned some tech giants right now. Are they getting really involved in blockchain? Because, you know, a lot of companies say we're doing blockchain more for like uh, marketing or public image type thing. But are they really involved and interested? Yeah, I think so. Yes. Uh, for example, we partner with Baidu and they're really working on a um, blockchain platform and this blockchain the solution. Yeah, they've been putting resources into this. Yeah. Fantastic. One thing that I really love about the Hobby Exchange and the business in general is you guys are always regulated, you're licensed, and uh, obviously you got the virtual currency exchange license in Japan, which is very difficult to get. There's a waiting list of hundreds and hundreds of companies, but could you tell us, like, why is it important for you to be regulated or compliant or licensed? What, why does it really matter? Well, first of all, um, I think change. Customers from all over the world. We we have customers from 130 countries. They are all depositing their funds into the exchange. So we have to make them feel they're secure and we are trustworthy. So it's our duty to do things fully compliant. Yeah, it makes a lot of it's trust, right? Like you said, yeah. I yeah. think people don't realize how difficult it is to get a license and all the due diligence behind it. Yeah. Yeah, so um, like like uh, I shared in my presentation yesterday, um, Hobi is top two um, um, in terms of aggregated funds deposit into the exchange by the end of uh, December last year. So we're top two in the world. It means that um, customers put a lot of trust in us. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, I, actually, I read recently that less than 10% of the, uh, the cryptocurrency exchanges across the globe mm -hmm. are licensed. So you're very privileged, I think, to be the very few to. Yeah, we're, we're working hard. That's great. So you're talking about how volume. How is the excitement these days? Do you feel like, you know, some people said that the bear market was a bit tough, you know, and, and many people working on exchanges were saying, oh, you know, the crypto winter is affecting us. But you said that the interest is still there. Do you still still see lots of interest? Yes. Well, um, I, I think we definitely seen quite a bit of um, interest from uh, institutions. Yeah, so uh, our institutional business unit's um, performance uh, increased by 400% in Q3, so and Q3 and Q4 in last year. So it's definitely a sign. And, and I think that um, from the year of 2020 and uh, from now on in the future, high net worth individuals and institutions will be contri contributing a lot of the trading volumes in, in cryptocurrency. That's great to hear. Yeah. Are they mainly interested in, for example, Bitcoin and Ethereum or other asset classes, sub-asset classes? What's the impression you're getting now? Well, they're definitely starting with Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. liquidity yeah. issue. Yeah, yeah, there are definitely liquidity issue for for other altcoins, um, and even for Bitcoin, for institutions to execute large orders, they need um, you know smooth fiat gateway. They need uh, help with execution large order, and they need seamless you know trading experience. So that's why we 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 formed this new entity, this new business unit 
institution, global institutional business unit, and to tailor some products to to meet、um, our institutional clients' needs. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. We have the same feedback in Switzerland. It's Bitcoin、yeah. only for now. Yeah, but it's already a good step, right? For, yeah,、uh, yeah, definitely. That's cool. And in terms of yourself, like obviously the Hobby token HT has been has had a spectacular performance, but even more important than performance has utility, like real utility.、Um, can you tell us a little bit about the Hobby token? That would be really nice. Yeah. yeah so、um, we are working hard on、uh, you know finding real user case scenarios for for our customers and HT holders to utilize HT. Uh, we recently announced a partnership with Traveler.com, so HT holders can use HT to get discount hotel bookings across like 230 different countries. Yeah, 230. That's amazing. Yeah, and、uh, we make sure that、uh, w- you know we did it in a you know in a more compliant way. So countries that should not take、um, cryptocurrency payments. Yeah, we make sure that their their IP is blocked. And you're so right because multi-utility tokens have been the best performing tokens out of 2018, 2019, and likely to go in the future. So so happy that you guys are giving real utility and ability to use the actual token. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And、uh, one more、um, well story with HT is that uh, uh, it's the way to see our real. Volume, right, and real real revenue because we use twenty percent of our revenue to buy back and、um, and burn、uh, HT token from the market. From the market, yes,、yeah, <laughs> not from their own treasury. <laughs> That's a really good point. Is that one of your favorite features in terms of the economics? A lot of people love the buy back burn system,、mm. and you have a cool logo with a flame, right, on the the website. And yeah, is that one of your, the exciting features to you, or or what is your Yeah,、favorite. because we want it's 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 kind of、uh, aligned with the features of blockchain and cryptocurrency itself is transparency. So we want to make、um, what's going on with will be more transparent.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you guys give annual reports. You share、yes. all this data. Yes, and every quarter we、um, disclose all the HT、um, bad bag, yeah, to our clients. Fantastic.、Yeah, What are some features of the future that you would like to see in terms of trading, like or or investing in crypto? Is there any particular? This show is called Crypto Night, so it talks about kind of like the limitations we still have. What would you like to see as one of the next futures, maybe in 2020 or 2021? Yeah, definitely.、Um, well, first, we'd love to see more. Um, countries to come up with regulations and rules, so that a lot of、um, currencies can 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 be、um, used in you know trade crypto. That's def- definitely the thing that we want to see,、um, and also we want to see more institutions and tra- from traditional markets coming into the、um, into the market into the play, and、uh, you know liquidity will become better. Yeah, that's a huge topic this、yeah. year, right? Regulatory clarity, like it's still、uh, quite unclear. One of the massive topics as well is the RMB, the Chinese yuan being digitized, and that's being debated all over the place. And I, I know, like, people have different opinions, but、um, what's your take? You know, the U.S. dollar might be digitized. You know, RMB is this a good thing for us as a crypto movement, or what's your overall idea? And- yeah, so.、Um- We know that、uh, Facebook announced Libra, but it's more from a company level, and it's been challenged、um, multiple times by the U.S. Congress.、Um, however, for for the Chinese central bank announced、uh, DSAP, and I think it's a very good sign for us to see how RMB and how China is going to play in the market.、Uh, we've been moving fast, faster than than we all expected. Yeah, it's really exciting. I mean. I would love to have these cr- global currencies digitized so that I can, you know, diversify my portfolio as well. And, yeah.、Uh, are you are you a, a fan of the DeFi movement, by the way, these days? You know, DeFi is like every conference: DeFi, DeFi, decentralized finance,、uh, decentralized exchanges, the MakerDAO, and all these platforms. What's your overall like view on this DeFi movement these days? Well, we definitely see a lot of、um, DeFi projects coming up. We say it's still very early, and、uh, we hope to see some great DeFi projects,、um, you know, coming up in this year. And、uh, we'll wait and see how the market is reacting to that. Yeah, that should be very exciting. And in terms of de- decentralized exchange and centralized exchanges,、um, 
people have different opinions, but do you see the future being a mix of both? Or how do you see how the future of, of exchanges maybe five, 10 years from now? I know it's a difficult question to yeah, ask. But. Well, maybe that's the ultimate goal to, to have a decentralized exchange. But now, you know, there's technical issues and there's trust issues. And even like right now, you know, people, people say that exchanges, they have responsibilities of helping with um, uh, anti-money laundry and um, you know KYC. It's hard to go decentralized right now. Yeah, and uh, speaking of anti-money laundry, we've um, developed this new system, Star Atlas, to it's an on-chain monitoring system to to track every single um, you know uh, bad transactions. Yeah, it's, it's 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 not for profit, and we've just did it because we feel that as a, one of the leading exchange in the world, we are, we are obligated to. Fantastic, but I totally agree with you. Like in terms of decentralized exchanges, the vision and you know the philosophy is great, but there are many hurdles, right? Like you yeah. said, you can KYC, which you know can allow some criminal activity, but on top of that, the user experience, right? The liquidity. Yeah. And many people think that there are no fees, but actually in the smart contract, they include fees within the smart contract. So it is not fee-less either, right? So yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting. Are there any other things like that you you really are excited about this year that you want to share? Any maybe numbers or anything about yourself that you love to share to the community out there? Yeah. So um, as the markets become bigger and we've attracted attention from the traditional world, um, our team has been more um, professional. Like we have talents from. Goldman Sachs, from Merrill Lynch, from um, Standard Charters. Um, so we've been working on some good products so that we see, speak the same language of the traditional finance people. And our perpetual swap is uh, coming up in Q1 and uh, some other great features. So we're, we're really excited about this year and uh, we're going global this year. That's great. Yes. Please do go global. I met you. I know your team in London and great people in London as well. Um, and in terms of following Hobie or following yourself, like where should we find you? Where's the easiest way to get in touch with you? Uh, Twitter. Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's uh, Ciara underscore Hobie. Ciara underscore Hobie. Definitely. Yep. Okay. For those who want to get in touch with Ciara, definitely contact Ciara through Twitter. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And we will be back next week, premiering at 8 o'clock GMT at a PC near you. Thanks, guys. Thank you.